another customer. Driver's license, mate. You're an absolute menace. Oh, really? Like a beast of honey. This is what you call a police state. Uh, the, the cops claim they're finishing. Gladys has resigned. We're celebrating. Democracy manifest. Maybe they're delivering the evidence. Very embarrassing. Hey, what happened to the drug test? Tell me, you didn't answer the question. Stand up. We should measure. Come here, please. Today, sweetheart. Don't vote for Liberal, Labor or Green. What's the question exactly? As you can see behind me, we have another customer. You're wasting police resources. Legal and ethical. Ah, ah, ah. There's evidence. Good, you walk, Jay. Why would a police hide, you know? Look at him. Look, look, at, look how he's hiding. He thinks he's where's Wally. Look at him. You just ripped it out on camera. Skiing. Skiing, mostly. <laughs> let's talk, buddy. Yeah, let's get one. Are you the same one as yesterday? <laughs> so, guys, we've got AFP on the scene. I am going, why call me Boris, to a direction. You can't listen to this stuff without having a beer. An area which is lawful to attend an essential reason. So you're foraging. You're foraging for the fruit of the land. That doesn't make any sense. Why didn't you check this one? You always look stressed when you see me, man. And these poor kids just came out of Academy in Goulburn. We are not marching to Parliament. We are marching on Parliament. Don't be shy. Channel 7 or Channel 9? Well, here you go. How about that? Enjoying the diesel engine of the Land Cruiser? You know what? The Electric Commission would just love that. Can you not interrupt the search, mate? The been a good Every time the cops try and do this, they lose. Look no, the women and children. What has he found? <laughs> I'm under arrest. I already told you. I was followed by high patrol the whole way there and back. <laughs> I'm, I'm flying the Aussie card, the freedom of speech card. Welcome to... Fascist country Australia. He's another one joining the party. We're all being oppressed, we're all being intimidated. I've just, I've just got to give you one of these. Well, you're serving this, you may as well read it. Do I get a schmacko for today for being a good citizen? Watch them run away in shame. Which Thanks. channel are you from? Enjoy your day, mate. Boom! Thank you very much. <laughs>
uh, the Aussie Cossack show uh, on Saturdays, 5 p.m. Of course, it's not very suitable. People go out on Saturdays. And of course, there's church Saturdays at six o'clock for the Russian Orthodox community. And it's not a little bit appropriate on the Australian time, uh, but it is 10 a.m. Moscow time. So we're going to be doing this on Sundays at 5 p.m. So Sunday nights, put in your diary every Sunday night. Tune into the Aussie Cossack show. Best place to tune in is via X, Aussie Cossack on X, formerly known as Twitter. You can also tune in on Rumble. Uh, we are, we've found a way to broadcast through uh, YouTube there, uh, through DDG of Politics. So we're, we're back on there. People from Kirribilli, uh, Liverpool. Uh, we've got uh, Switzerland. We've got Minnesota. Uh, shout out to, uh, of course, Paul from Mornington, one of our regular listeners. Uh, the old stomping ground where you in Western Sydney back in the days. Yeah, it's been a while since we uh, were on the streets of Sydney. And where, guys, let me know in the comment section, where is the Aussie Kozak more effective? On the streets of Sydney or hold up in the Russian consulate where we are doing non-stop information and let's just call it propaganda war. We are fighting the enemy's propaganda with the truth. That's what we're doing. And the best place you can keep track of all of the stuff that I'm doing constantly, 16-hour days here, is... Uh, going to Aussie Kozak on Telegram. We've got uh, 10, 15, 20 updates a day there, all night, all day. The latest from the front lines, latest, latest from the war zone, latest in uh, all the political developments uh, in the midst of World War Three. Also, local news in Australia and everything else. Uh, yes, Arthur, you can chat on X. So leave your comments uh, on the screen if you're watching via X. And I, I prefer you watch via X, actually. By the way, I do not use Facebook. Anyone who is still using Facebook is a twit. If you're on Facebook, that means you're doing the enemy a favor because Facebook, Meta, that is a platform where the algorithm suits the enemy. So if you've recently left Facebook, you're on the right side of history. And I believe one of those people is uh, Councillor Adrian McRae who just closed down his Facebook because Facebook is full of morons because the algorithm allows these type of people. And if you stand for truth on Facebook, you'll be censored, deplatformed, so just stop using Facebook altogether. Vote with your feet. Use those platforms which allow freedom of speech. And those platforms are, of course, Telegram and X. They Eventually, they'll get to us on those free platforms, I believe. It's only a matter of time before uh, the Ministry of Truth or the Censorship Department try to close down those uh, platforms that are still available. Uh, this bloke says, Meta, a low love clients, but he himself is on Facebook. So there you go. Uh, Rex Kite, get off Facebook, my friend and uh, get onto another platform. Uh, but we've got a, a, an interesting show due tonight. We're going to be joined by Council Adrian McRae from Western Australia, who's been making headlines uh, internationally and locally. I'll get to that. But first, I'm going to give you guys some intel. And there are certain people watching tonight's show whose ears are going to go red because I'm going to be talking about them. I'm not going to be naming their names, but they know who they are. I've been in the consulate for 480 days. It's very clear that the decision to allow me to stay in the consulate was done uh, by Moscow, in Moscow. Now, there are people, bureaucrats, in the lower echelons of public service who, for example, have been in their positions since before the special motivation, before this war, before COVID even, stationed overseas, and they have no concern for the country. They have no concern for patriotism. They have no concern for Russia's interests. All they care about is their own interests. And I clash with people like that. You guys have been watching me for a while now. If you're a regular listener, you know that I can't stand the weak dogs, these traitors, these people who haven't supported the Russian special motivation outwardly and openly. People who are weak or shy or embarrassed whatever you want to call it, whatever their reason is for not supporting Russia during this time, bureaucrats, people who are on the payroll of the Russian government, people who are working in positions, they consider themselves elites. You're not elites. Vladimir Putin was very clear about this. Those people who previously thought they were elites are no longer elites. The new elites of Russia are those people who are fighting in the special motivation and supporting the special motivation. Victory would will come very soon. And if you're not a part of victory, what have you done during this time? So to those bureaucrats, I'm going to uh, be as exact as possible, but also as vague as possible. Now, apparently the Australian government has put pressure on the Russian consulate general not to allow visitors, 
not to allow visitors to uh, the Russian consulate general. So people who, very small amount of people who I would like to visit me, are being restricted from visiting me. Now, when Assange was locked up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, he had plenty of visitors. I know this because my solicitor, Mark Davies, was also Assange's solicitor, and we have many mutual acquaintances. Uh, there was nothing wrong with that. Why would the Australian government prohibit visitors? Now, the Australian government apparently right, has demanded that I be kept like a prisoner inside the Russian consulate. Is that really the Australian government's position? And if I'm a Russian citizen on the territory of the consulate, does that matter what the Australian government thinks? The Australian government thinks that I should be restricted from broadcasting or I should be restricted or I should have my internet turned off or I should be locked in a room and not allowed to uh, do any journalism. Should the Russian consulate take orders from the Australian government or should they take orders from Moscow? That is the question. That is the question. Uh, which I'm going to ask tonight. I want to ask you guys watching. And you can see where I'm getting going with this. I'm, I'm, I'm being vague, but I'm also being very, very precise. These people who I'm referring to, this person who I'm referring to, there is a law in Russia. Once you turn 65, you can no longer be a public servant. It's a federal law. This person has turned 65 already. This person is very sympathetic to the West. This person has never outwardly or openly supported Russia or Russia's victory. This person, in fact, on the 9th of May, personally asked me last year, he said, please make sure when I'm uh, at the 9th of May laying a wreath on Victory Day that there are no Zeds or there is no pro-Russian paraphernalia or posters or flags. I detest these kind of people. And the reason I'm saying this is because there are thousands of men, real Russian men, who are dying on the front lines fighting the globalists. Meanwhile, in the rear, behind the lines, you've got these bureaucrats. I detest them. These people need to be removed, stopped, retired, investigated, especially for, for example, embezzlement and other things, because they only care about themselves. They don't care about Russia's future. They don't care about Russia's uh, present. They only care about themselves. And they are weak. They are cowards, right? And they collaborate with the West. They collaborate with the West. How can the Australian government stop me from having visitors? For example, last week, a group of priests decided to uh, visit me. And I was very thankful of that. I had confession and Holy Communion. Now, apparently, the Australian government said, you can't do that. right? This is the, a bureaucrat claims that the Australian government stopped the priest from attending, right? The priest attended. Here they are. Here, the, here are the priests, as you can see. We had to blur their faces out because they were worried that the Australian government would detect their presence here. And here they are visiting me. And I was very thankful for them to visit. But there's some type of pressure being applied. Now, if we're not allowed to have visits from priests, I mean, what is going on? Even prisoners on death row, or prisoners in maximum security can have visits on priests. And I'm very thankful to Father Alexander Paramonov, who's not afraid of having his face shown, and he's very proud to visit me at the Russian consulate. But why was there uh, this hindering of these visits? Now, we have uh, May coming up in about, what, 30 days, so less than 30 days. We've got 5th of May, which is uh, Russian Easter, very big day. Uh, and... I'd love for my relatives to visit me. I'd love for some friends to visit me. I'd love for a couple of priests to visit me. I'd love for my wife's relatives to visit me, right? We've got 7th of May, which is Putin's inauguration. We'd love to celebrate that. We've got the 9th of May, which is Russian Victory Day. Now, my wife's great-grandparents were both on both sides, on all sides were veterans of the war. And we want to celebrate that day in their memory and celebrate victory, as every Russian person around the world does. Why am I being hindered? From having visitors, I'm, I'm saying this tonight live. There's a saying in Russian, you know, so I'm not being direct with exact names, but who is clever enough to figure out who I'm talking about will realize it. And the uh, this is a shot across the bow, a very serious shot across the bow to those people who are hindering, right? Uh, who are under the influence of the Australian intelligence services or under the influence of the Australian government and uh, through the Australian side. Uh, giving into pressure from the Australian side to somehow put pressure on me 
to make it hard for me to continue my work as a journalist inside the Russian consulate. Moscow has said, leave Boyk off there, let him operate, let him do whatever he likes. He has diplomatic asylum. He's got a Russian passport. He's a Russian citizen. Full stop. Full stop. Why is there this hindering? Why is, this there, why is there obstruction from people, from a person who has not shown any patriotism, any outward support to Russia's special inspiration all this time? In fact, uh, we've fixated many instances where he's openly against things that are patriotic. And if you're following the channel, let's see in the comment section, people can figure out, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, why are... Russian bureaucrats stationed overseas giving in to pressure. That's not right. So these are bureaucrats. This bureaucrat in particular has been here from 2019. Since then, he hasn't been back to Russia. He's out of touch with what's happening in Russia. He's out of touch with the Russian spirit. Russia's at war. Russia's changing. Cor uh, corruption is being stamped out. Corrupt bureaucrats are being arrested all around the country. Traders are being arrested all around the country. This guy's on the wrong side of history. Everybody who's Russian, and that doesn't concern the people who are watching this show, because this is mostly a show in the West, this is a time where you need to be in the fight. And it, it, it's okay if you're not on the front line, because there's plenty of work to do outside the front lines. For example, in the West, in the informational war. Uh, so I'm telling you guys this tonight on the open line, uh, on the air, live, because we're preparing the narrative. Is there a chance that they could hand me over to the Australian intelligence services, to the Australian police, to the federal police, to the New South Wales police? I don't think Moscow would allow that. And if it was up to Moscow, and it is up to Moscow, they will not hand me over, right? They would not hand me over. Uh, but what if we have traders in the midst? What do we have middle-level bureaucrats or lower-level bureaucrats who are very sympathetic to the West, who would love to, in fact, stay in the West I'm talking about a bloke that would love to move to the West. There are plenty of people who defect from Russia to the West. We've seen that. We've seen a guy called Vinogradov. He was uh, the advisor to the consul. Where is he now? He's in the United States. Why? Because he defected. And that's there's been a pattern of behavior. I don't care about these guys. I don't care about what they think, how they see the world. They love to be in the West. They, they came here and they enjoy every minute of it. They love to visit Byron Bay. They love to visit Blue Mountains. They love to go to the beach. They love to go on long walks, Bondi Bronte walks. They love to go to banquets. They love to uh, attend uh, all sorts of events where everyone claps for them and then they hand out these awards to people who are like-minded. And like-minded, I mean weak, not patriotic. They do things just for the sake of showing the illusion of their great work in Australia, where really the work was absolutely provided. How would you say provided in English? It was it was failed. They failed their assignment. But that's the thing. They don't care about Russia. They don't care about Russia. And these people are giving in to the demands of the Australian government to hinder visitor access to me, sitting in the Russian consulate. Right? What do you think? What do you think, guys, in the comment section? We are not very happy. Jan, not happy Jan. Uh, and I know there are plenty of guys in the front line who would agree with me because I talk to them quite regularly. I talk to Moscow all the time. I live on Moscow time. Uh, during the night here at the consulate, I uh, have regular conversations uh, with uh, Russia and with my comrades over there, people who are quite serious in uh, their approach to... Uh, Russia and the military, uh, what we're doing as the Russian world, who want victory, people who are working towards victory. This person who I'm talking about needs to stop and think, how is he, after victory, going to face the veterans who are on the front lines today? What's he going to say to them when they ask him, oh, while we were fighting NATO, what did you do? Go for walks, Bondara Bronte, go to banquets, or go to constantly go to restaurants pretending you're meeting with people on official business and then sign the check and hand it into the uh, accounts department and say, oh, can you refund me on this because I was meeting somebody? You weren't meeting anyone. You are sitting there with your wife stuffing your face. That's what you were doing. The, and the embezzlement of Russian government money overseas during the war is a shocking crime. We've got the whole country who was fighting and we've got uh, kids who are uh, so, uh, collecting things from the front for the front lines, women and children making candles, um, uh, sewing camouflage nets, 
from all around Russia, sending everything to the front lines to support the soldiers. Meanwhile, overseas, we've got bureaucrats who are interested in embezzling Russian funds. And not even large amounts of funds. Like, I get it if you're making millions of dollars. This guy's just doing petty theft. Petty theft, right? It's a disgrace. And this is the type of people who give in to the pressure from the Australian side to hinder my work, right? I'm not happy, and I'm telling you guys about this. I haven't named any names yet. But uh, perhaps tonight's broadcast will come in handy down the track. And it's a way of uh, letting the crowd know. And uh, should things uh, go pear-shaped, you know what to do. Make as much noise as possible, non-stop. They can't stop me. They can't stop me. We know well, even if they send me to prison, if they hand me over, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Because we, we it's like when they talk about stopping Putin. It doesn't matter. Putin's one person. There's 147 million of us, Russians, Russian citizens. There's billions more in the world in BRICS who support the Russian side. You can't stop all of us. I'll continue broadcasting until uh, they physically stop me from broadcasting. That's the main reason why I'm in the consulate, because I need to broadcast. And if you want to keep up with all the broadcasts, make sure you subscribe to Aussie Cossack on Telegram. What have these bureaucrats done when they look back on their time, their tenure, besides embezzlement and betrayal of Russian interests? I mean, in the end, uh, Assange was uh, betrayed out of the Ecuadorian embassy. But the problem is Assange wasn't Ecuadorian. He wasn't an Ecuadorian citizen. I'm a Russian citizen. I'm Russian. My great-grandparents were all born in the Russian Empire from all four sides of the family. And I'm very proud of that. And I'm very proud of having a Russian passport. And a Russian passport gives certain protections. But if I have a Russian passport in my pocket, why should I give in to any pressure from the Australian government? Why should the Australian government be allowed to uh, hold me in prisoner-like conditions and prevent priests, even priests, for goodness sake, from meeting with me? This is ridiculous. This is outrageous. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace that the Australian government would get involved. And if it's not the Australian government, whoever made that up is a liar and deserves to be punished because I'm uh, blowing this story now, letting everybody know. Is that is that right? Is that normal? 480 days in the consulate. And what? I've seen my father once, my mother once, my mother-in-law twice, what, my family a couple of times, brother once and so forth. Is that normal? Why are there restrictions? Why do they seek to hold me as a prisoner? If I'm in the Russian consulate and I'm a Russian citizen, there should not be any restrictions. Penny Wong famously about a month ago bragged, Mr. Boykov does not have any immunities or privileges. Okay, fair enough. I have no immunities. I'm not a diplomat. I don't need immunities. I don't need much. I just need to broadcast. Uh, privileges. What does she mean by that? What does Penny Wong mean when she says Mr. Boykov has no privileges? You mean restricting me from communicating with uh, the outside world or from receiving visitors? So not happy, Jan. Not happy, Jan. Let's see what the comment section says. Uh, but this is maybe one of the ways they can only get to me. Absolutely. And there will always be collaborators. Uh, indeed. But guys, I'm not complaining. You know, you want to fight? I'm in for the fight. I thrive on this. You have a go at me. You just, you just make me more enthusiastic, more ambitious. You give me energy when you push on me. The best thing they could have done is not hindered me not obstructed me, let me do my thing. But when they do these type of things, when they even stop priests from being able to visit me in the Russian consulate, for goodness sake, priests who are actually my relatives, Father Alexander Paramonov is my second cousin. And thank God for him coming to visit. It's a great thing to have a, a visit. I mean, when I was in maximum security in prison, I had visits from a priest also, uh, but there was no Russian Orthodox priest there. There was uh, some Coptic Orthodox, Father Tedros. It was nice to have a visit from him. So this is the thing, guys. Uh, who do we blame? Who do we blame? It is indeed, it is uh, psychopathic behavior to restrict these type of visits, indeed. Uh, people want me to name him. What should we do? Should we name him? I think the person who's watching that, I'm not going to name him just out of respect uh, to the system. Because as much of a low life this guy is, and much as of a corrupt bureaucrat he is, he's still part of the system. And that's a system which I defend. And during the war, it's not good to uh, create division within your lines. So out of, uh, only out of that respect, I won't name this person. But anyway, people who are clever enough at political algebra will figure out who this person is by what I've said. Anyway, uh, they say it's called house arrest. 
And uh, the reason in the comment section is to warn others not to follow in my footsteps. But I, I implore everybody, follow as much as you can. Make as much make as much noise in, as you can. And don't have to follow my footsteps. Everybody has their own path. Uh, but I'd like to think that uh, my time here is uh, of assistance to those people in the audience watching. We had over the years, over what the last, how many years? We've had millions and millions of views, uh, subscribers, supporters, rallies, events. Uh, and that's what they hate. They hate that. They want to stop that. Right? They want to stop that. Why are they afraid of that? That's why they'll bring in this disinformation bill to try to completely shut down any of the last reigning voices. They want everyone to be glued to the mainstream media like zombies. Uh, there it is. Uh, why are we here? Moment of truth. Speaking your mind. Absolutely. And they are adding fuel to the fire when they try and push back on me. Why would you stop priests from visiting me? Why would you stop my family from visiting me? If I'm a Russian citizen on the territory of the Russian consulate, why can't I have a, a you know, being reasonable? I mean, I, my birthday, no visitors. New Year's Eve, no visitors. Now, Easter is coming up. You think on Easter, the main Russian day of the year for Russian Orthodox, they would not object to having visits. Now, the bureaucrat who's in charge of this, who's responsible for this, claims that it's the Australian government putting pressure on him. I want to know, is that true? Is that true? Is the Australian government putting pressure for there not to be visits, for example, from a priest or from family or from friends? Why uh, is there that type of restrictions? Now, let me tell you this. This bureaucrat, when the priest said, we're come to visit uh, Ozzy Kozak, we come to visit Simeon, he said, no, I have been uh, forced by the Australian government to hold him as a prisoner. So somebody believes that I am a prisoner and I should be treated like a prisoner. Is that is that legal? Is that normal? Uh, I don't think so. Barry is saying don't name him. I think people can figure it out anyway. Uh, uh, this can uh, continue, continue. And you know what? I'll tell you what, guys. The more they push, the more fire they ignite. Who is stopping? Is it the federal or the state government? Uh, but we'll see. Uh, who's depriving me of the rights? I mean, seriously. But I'm not complaining at all, really. But there are certain things every once and again, for example, during Great Lent to have a priest visit or three priests visit as are requested, that should not be obstructed, should not be hindered. And I uh, I hope that after tonight's uh, broadcast, because it is a shot across the bow, there's going to be a, a radical changes made and an end to the obstruction. Because those people who are fighting for the special motivation and supporting Russia at this time, these are the people who are on the right side of history. When the smoke settles, when the war is over, when Russia's victorious, we're going to look back and we're going to say, who did what? And if you end up as one of these people who did nothing or hindered those who were supporting the front, well, what can I say? Uh, what a great uh, what a great name. I've got to read this guy's name out. Commercial and Residential Plasterboard Fix in Queensland. Big shout out to all the jeep rockers out there. Uh, it's a very good trade to be in. Uh, people should be able to visit and conduct business in the consulate, says Rue. And he's an Australian. What can I say? Uh, look, I'd love to move to Russia if we could get a uh, resolution. We could get a resolution going. Uh, thousands of you are joining in. I can see all over the platforms. Uh, a huge amount of people are tuning in. So keep tuning in and make sure you hit the like button, hit the share button. We're going to get to all your questions tonight. Leave questions in the comments section. Uh, leave your questions in the comments section. Leave your comments. Your comments will randomly pop up on the screen in no particular order. And we will uh, give you guys a platform to say what you think. Because at the end of the day, bureaucrats are accountable to public opinion. That's why they're bureaucrats. If they're not in the private sector. So... Uh, let's get uh, Putin on the job. Well, that's the thing, mate. <laughs> I've always been a very big supporter of Vladimir Putin, even in the hardest of times. In fact, when I was in my prison cell, I had a portrait of Putin hanging up on the wall. In the prison cell, as a maximum security prisoner, as a national security interest prisoner. That really ticked off the jail authorities. What can we do? What can we do? Uh, I'm sure the Australian government and Penny Wong are very happy when they've got treacherous, weak bureaucrats who are enforcing some type of pressure onto me. But I don't give in to pressure. Your pressure only fuels the fire. Don't you understand, guys? 
I never give in to pressure. The cops take me on. I laugh at them in their face. I, I fight back. I turn the tables on them. You take me on, it'll, it'll just make me more enthusiastic to fight back. It, I, I wake up in the morning and I work 16-hour days in the consulate, 16-hour days. I don't have any distractions. It's fantastic. I love it. It's a fantastic setup. I'm closed off from the outside world. In fact, I'm closed off from the consulate itself. It's very heavy security here. There's guards 24-7, you know, surveillance systems 24-7 all around the perim perimeter. I'm in a fortified position here, and I'm able to just focus on broadcasting. And as time has shown, uh, what we are doing in informational war in the West is having a very positive impact on the war. And you guys know that watching. Remember public opinion at the beginning of the special moderation. Remember in March, April 2022. Remember public opinion. Now look at it. Look how the world is now turning to Russia's side. And if, if Trump gets in, I'm sure they will, uh, as he says, settle the conflict and we get rid of Zelensky forever and we get rid of these Nazis forever in Ukraine and we make Ukraine great again because uh, this Nazism needs to be, of course, eradicated. Exactly right, Barry. They stoke my fire. You take me on, then you understand. That's the more pressure there is, the more hit back they are going to get. Absolutely. Uh, so what can we do? We've got more comments coming out. Read them all out. We've got Deb talking about uh, Australia won't demand Assange back. I don't see them doing a deal with Russia. What sort of sentence could you face if you left the consulate? Well, that's if we have faith in the Australian legal system. If we believe the Australian legal system will give me a fair go. But don't forget, last time I was incarcerated, for what? For breaching a non-publication order during a YouTube video, they made me a national security interest inmate. You don't, you don't have any rights when you're at NSI. Very rare you'll come across an NSI. These classifications in the prison system are reserved for the top-tier prisoners who are national security interests, terrorists and so forth. So what can I say? Uh, we are very, very proud of the... This guy thinks it's a recording. It's not a recording, mate. Great Carpenter, B, dude, whatever your name is. It's not a recording. We're absolutely live here. And your questions are being read out live. So you guys can uh, uh, keep asking away. I know I had to get off that off my chest. Uh, very, very angry about that. Uh, in other news, in other news, Rewind it, but go back to that. Just the last warning. I won't bring this up next show, right? But this is a shot across the bow. Corrupt bureaucrats who are against special liberation need to be removed. That's it. No negotiating. We do everything to fight for Russia. We put everything on the line. We put Russia's interests first, our own interests second. And we don't want these bureaucrats, these corrupt, weak, weak, pro Western bureaucrats to get in the way. Replace them, remove them, do whatever they have to do, right? Especially if they're already 65 years old and they've already overstayed their uh, tenure, their five years or six years, whatever it is, into the sixth year now or the fifth year. There are laws in Russia. We've got to stick to them. So we'll see how that happens. But tune in to next week. We're going to be having Sunday nights, 5 p.m. every Sunday. We haven't named the bloke, but it's shot across the bow. And I'm sure people in the comment section can figure it out. Hit share, hit like, keep uh, spreading this live. We're going to go for quite a long time tonight, so settle in Sunday night. We'll go longer than usual, maybe up to 1.5 hours in total because we've got a lot of things to get through. There's a lot of news in the world. Uh, we want to make note of the two-year anniversary since Vladimir Zhirinovsky's death. Now, there's a bureaucrat, there's a politician who I really respect. In fact, it's not right to call him a bureaucrat. Bureaucrat has a sort of negative uh, vibe to it. This guy was a genius politician. He was a true leader of... Russia, and it's been two years since he passed away. Two years. Before he passed away, before he died, Vladimir Zhirinovsky left a message for us. Но плохо о людях не думайте. Пусть каждый живет, как у него получается. Алкоголь нельзя, табак нельзя, наркотики нельзя. 22 год. Живите, как получится. 
Отчаиваться не надо. Знаний достаточно у вас у всех. Сегодня столько информации. Никому не желайте плохого. Ну и помните, не рой другому яму, сам в нее упадешь. В марте поговорим о женщинах. 1 мая день весны. Потом лето. Потом опять осень. И так не спеша. Будем идти тихо, если не будет войны. А если будет война, то победим. И каждый получит свое по заслугам. There you go. Владимир Жиновский. Uh, one of my, I think, all-time favorite, you want, honestly, I have to tell you, uh, politician. And he was not just a politician. He predicted everything that is happening now in the world, in the Middle East, with Ukraine, with uh, the war. Uh, he was a uh, very... Very clever. He was a genius, really. And we underestimated him when he was alive. And now that he's gone, those people who are laughing at him are now crying because he predicted all of this. He predicted all of this. And he had so many predictions that came true. Uh, it's been two years since he passed away. And, of course, it's very sad how he passed away. He had eight jabs. I don't know why he did that, or who forced him. He shouldn't have had them. No one should have any of these jabs. And those people who didn't have jabs are as healthy and happy as Larry, and they're enjoying life. And those people that did have jabs have jab regret now. So if you didn't have one, congratulations, you're on the right side of history. And unfortunately, they got rid of Zhidanovsky because he died just when the special operation was uh, just started. He was hospitalized before that. Really, really sad because we really do need him. This would be a great time to have Vladimir Zhidanovsky. Uh, he was right about everything. In 2024, there will not be a country Ukraine. Вы не учитываете ситуацию на Ближнем Востоке. Там развиваются такие события, что все забудут вообще, что такое Украина. Дело идет о Третьей мировой войне. И Иран это не Вьетнам, и не Северная Корея, и не э, Косово. Здесь будут самые страшные события. Заслуга цивилизации современной, что западный мир все-таки умнеет. И они уйдут с Афганистана, уйдут с Ирака. Но, к сожалению, есть одно но. Вот Иран. Они туда входить не будут, но будут применять силу. Такое решение в Израиле принято уже, к сожалению. Вот в чем проблема. И что это будет с исламским миром? Будет полная дестабилизация Ближнего Востока и Кавказа и по всему миру. Потому что кроме Запада есть вот это государство еще. Четыре часа утра, 22 февраля. Я бы хотел, чтобы 22 год был бы годом мирным, но я люблю правду. 75 лет говорю правду. Это будет год не мирный. Это будет год, когда наконец Россия станет снова великой страной, и все должны заткнуться и уважать нашу страну. И чтобы с этого Олимпа окончательно не свалиться, они пойдут на Третью мировую войну чужими руками. И украинцы этого не понимают, что они пушечное на мясо. Плевать им на Крым, на Украину, на Донбасс, на Ближний Восток. Эта борьба с Россией идет 300 лет уже. Да Украина. И никогда там не будет мира. Чудаки, давайте выполним Минские соглашения. Вы чудаки. Она нужна для войны. Они ударят по Донецку, а Донецк ударит по Мариуполю. И пошли колонны ополченцев на Киев, а патриоты России им помогут. Так начнется боевая схватка на русской земле за русских людей вот в самом центре Европы. И они все проиграют. Украинцы нападают на Крым, на Донбасс. И мы встаем на защиту. Значит, уничтожаем украинскую армию. В это время на помощь идет польская армия. Все на территории Украины, чтобы не задействовать территорию натовских стран. У НАТО нет других планов, кроме ведения войны. И главная цель – война с Россией. Напрямую с Россией они не пойдут. Но будут прижимать через Украину, через Белоруссию, через Прибалтику, через Кавказ. Это общая тенденция. Луганск становится независимым и Донбасс. Вслед за ними пойдет Харьков, Николаев, Херсон, Запорожье, Одесса. Днепропетровск. Весь юго-восток Украины 
вернется под русские знамена. Россия будет вы... показана всему миру как агрессор. Ego, definitely he had some foresight, as people in the comment section are pointing out. Uh, when he was alive, I would listen to him every day. My wife can confirm that I would always, uh, before going to bed, have a, a listen and a double check on the latest Vladimir Zhirinovsky announcements because everything he was saying has come true. There's not one politician that I know of in the world uh, who predicted everything so thoroughly. He was absolutely spot on. Uh, he was very, very impressive. And uh, I think... Uh, I think people in the West need to hear him. So we've uh, taken a liberty today uh, to share with you, uh, thanks to Sputnik, who put that compilation together, some of Vladimir Zhirinovsky's predictions. He predicted it all, everything that was happening. Uh, people are saying that this man was better than Nostradamus. Well, Nostradamus spoke in riddles. Zhirinovsky said it how he is, how it is. And uh, I'm definitely a great fan of uh, his uh, persona, of his character, I was when he was alive. I, I am further now. And again, those people that were laughing at him back when he was alive are now crying because they knew he was right. Uh, people are asking, how did he die? Look, unfortunately, he had eight jabs. It's just very sad, very sad. I remember when he started having them, started taking them, he started physically deteriorating. And it's very sad, unfortunate. I mean, he was so busy fighting the fight as a politician, as a Russian statesman that he probably didn't look into the jab situation and he just went along with whatever he was being told and he thought it was, probably thought he needed to show an example. Uh, and you know, look, no one's perfect on that thing. He got it wrong. And I just wish he was still with us. He, he was just with us and he was uh, still there. Ludin Zhirinovsky. He's definitely, definitely someone to remember on the two-year anniversary of his death, memory eternal, Vietnam Paimit. In other news in Australia, if you've been following our channel on Telegram, or Ozzy Kozak on X, formerly known as Twitter, you would have seen this uh, outrageous story that was uh, developing around Adrian McRae, uh, and he has been battling the mainstream media. The councillor from Western Australia, uh, the Channel 9 News calls him the little-known Polly. Well, he's certainly not little-known anymore. He's made headlines all over the world in international news. In Australia, all the mainstream media, Current Affair, Channel 7, ABC, the radios, the newspapers. I mean, look at the front page of the newspaper just a few days ago, uh, the kind of headlines that they were running. This is the front page of the Northwest Telegraph. There's Adrian McRae, the councillor from Port Hedland, together with Vladimir Putin. Putin, your foot in it. Hedland councillor's Russian folly raises eyebrows. Well, raises eyebrows for some, but I can tell you that there are many, many people, thousands of you, and those people, including tonight, watching tonight's show, who actually are very proud of what Adrian McRae uh, has been doing. Uh, why are they under attack? Why is he under attack? Why are they attacking? Why is the mainstream media and Channel 9 attacking him? Well, let's, let's just uh, refresh your memory. It was an unexpected appearance on Russian state television. But can I please pass on my... Newly appointed Port Hedland councillor Adrian McRae congratulating President Vladimir Putin on his re-election, hailing the process as the most transparent in the world, an opposing view to Western nations. It's completely unacceptable behaviour. It's bizarre commentary. It's quite inaccurate commentary. Mr McRae was reportedly invited to Moscow as part of an international delegation, seen here with the opposition candidate receiving a badge of honour for strengthening the friendship between Australia and Russia. The town of Port Hedland stating the trip wasn't on its watch, that the new councillor travelled to Russia in a personal capacity and that the town does not comment on the personal activities of elected members. What I expect is the, the town of Port Hedland to uh, counsel that, that uh, councillor in terms of his conduct and his commentary. Mr McRae previously spruiked himself as a philanthropist, appearing on 60 Minutes, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro and sharing the clip to his council election Facebook page. I believe in something strong enough to, to make it work. He was voted into council this month, yet to be sworn in, but after this appearance, supporters might have a few questions about their elected member. Quite frankly, I think we're all a bit embarrassed. Tracy Vo, Nine News. I think anyone's embarrassed. I think people are proud of Adrian McRae. Adrian McRae is an Australian hero. He's an international people's diplomat who has, of course, far exceeded any expectation that one would usually have for a regular councillor from a uh, Port Hedland council. And he's done a great job. He's got plenty of support internationally and all over Australia. And he joins us now 
on the Aussie Cossack show. Adrian McRae, welcome to uh, the Aussie Cossack show. Thank you, Cossack. Um, thanks for having me on. Mate, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see you. And uh, look, I just want to say uh, on behalf of our thousands and thousands of us watching tonight and in the comment section, people are having their say. As you can see, people appreciate what you've done. They've appreciated that you've taken a very strong and brave position. You're certainly no sellout and you're certainly uh, no pushover. You uh, went over to Moscow. You observed the elections. Uh, upon returning to Australia, you were attacked by the mainstream media and uh, by the words of the mainstream media, you've doubled down. You have stood by your claim that the Russian election was transparent and it, it was a definitely uh, a legitimate win by Vladimir Putin. Uh, how do you feel after two weeks of being battered by the media in Australia? How does it feel? Look, it's a it's certainly a strange feeling. Um, I, I didn't um, I didn't expect to come back to Australia to such a barrage of uh, smears and um, and I guess uh, yeah, I guess takedowns. Um, I'm not sure if it's because I was uh, voted into local government while I was overseas or or the narrative that they've pushed uh, so aggressively the last um, two years in particular is um is complete nonsense and and uh look i i was as as i've said on many uh interviews and um and and talk shows i've i've you know i i worked alongside u.s uh congressmen i worked alongside um you know elected members of parliament from over 120 countries i worked alongside um cosmonauts from the international space station i worked alongside some of the leading journalists um from from as i said from over 100 countries and 130 countries around the world but um, just because I came back and, uh, you know, I told the truth about what I saw, I was executed and crucified in the, in the Australian press, and that was quite a shock to me. I really didn't expect that, to be honest. Well, you have been uh, crucified by the Australian mainstream media, by certain government officials, such as the Western Australian Premier, uh, Roger Cook. Uh, but there are plenty of people, thousands of people all around the country who are absolutely 100% behind you. I mean, look at some of the comments across all sorts of platforms, TikTok, Telegram, uh, social media everywhere. Adrian McRae is gaining lots and lots of friends. Why? Because uh, he is the underdog. He's being persecuted by the Albanese regime, by the system. People are saying Adrian McRae for PM. Imagine we have a prime minister like him or at least a senator. And this is what the mainstream media and the establishment have not calculated. They've uh, miscalculated. They've made a, made a mistake by attacking Adrian McRae. They've just increased his profile and they've made people all around the world, uh, his fans, his supporters. And I'm, I dare say if Adrian McRae was to run for a higher political uh, platform, for example, the Senate or a federal election, I would certainly think that he would have a massive amount of support from the people in, the, uh, in Australia, in Western Australia, all around the country. Uh, the way he indeed gazumped the uh, mainstream media interviewers, and they, they had absolutely no chance against him because, guess what? Truth is on Australian McRae's side. One of the best moments from the interviews over the last few days that I saw, uh, Adrian, uh, you had was with 6PR Radio, with a radio announcer called Gary Adshear uh, down in Perth, uh, where you're from. Now, uh, this was a great moment. He tried to sort of give you one of those gotcha questions, but it absolutely backfired. In what about the execution of of people who are enemies of the Russian uh, president. What do you say? Okay, tell me one. Well, tell tell me one. What about Navalny, the way he was? <laughs> he was you, you, just, you just shot yourself in the foot. Navalny, even, even Budinov, the head of the Ukraine um, Secret Service, has come out this week and, and said, I'm sorry, guys, but Navalny died of a blood clot. The bloke had five Pfizer jabs what? and boasted about it. He dies of a blood clot in a, in a Russian prison, and here you are saying that he was, he was killed by killed by uh, the Russian government. That is the most absurd, ridiculous line to come out with. I'm, I'm, actually, embarrassed. I'm actually embarrassed for you that you even said it. Navalny was, was a, an extremist. Uh, hyper. You, you think Putin is aggressive. This guy was 10 times aggressive. He, he even said on the record that all Russian Muslims are cockroaches. They should be treated like annoying flies and exterminated with the back of a slip, slipper or a, or a fly swatter or even a revolver. And he, he's the guy that if he was in Australia, he would be in jail for hate crimes. He would be in jail for extremism. The bloke had corrupt, had corruption. His whole family, he, 
him and his brother working at Aeroflot long before they ever got into politics had been in and out of jail for their, their corrupt behaviour and ripping off the state through working in the national airline. Here, here we call him an opposition leader. Now, Navalny, at the height of his fame, never polled more than 3%. He didn't even have, he never even had any party he ever represented, never, doesn't even have a single seat in 450 seats in the lower house. The people here, we call him an opposition leader. It's, it's so insulting to the, to the intelligence of the Australian public that that narrative is, has been allowed to manifest. It's, it's absolutely absurd. Absolutely. Uh, like a boss, you answered that question. I couldn't have answered it better myself. Uh, I can see why they, uh, Adrian, called you a, uh, whatever they call you, a pro-Russian person or something, because the answers you give to these provocative questions, these really stupid questions, are, are fantastic, are spot on. But all you're saying is the truth. And all you're saying is what most of us in Australia are thinking. Uh, how has it been with the uh, support that you've received uh, over the last two weeks during this media campaign against you? Would you say that uh, you've been uh, pleasantly surprised by the reaction of the general public? Look, there has been a lot of um, a lot of support coming from, you know, for you know far afield, both um, internationally and and uh, and here in Australia. But also, there's been a fair share of um, criticism. I think. Um, you know, it's not a, it's certainly, you know, I saw a lot of the, the nice comments you, you brought uh, across the screen earlier, but, um, you know, we could probably uh, pull up a similar number of um, <laughs> very aggressive, uh, uh, you know, haters, haters that have a, have a, you know, an opposing view, but um, it seems to be a certain number of them. It's not a lot of, you know, it's not a lot of uh, strangers. It seems to be sort of 20 or 30 popping up around, uh, you know, the various social media sites, be it Facebook or, or on Twitter or, or even, um, you know some of the local the local councils. Well, the the, no, the Russian government the Russian government actually predicted that this would happen to you. Uh, the Russian government actually warned that you would be persecuted. This is when you were still in Moscow. Uh, the Russian government officially on the day of Putin's election at the official ceremony of the Russian Electoral Commission actually said that you're a very brave man for doing what you've done. Have a look at this. Так, господин Эдриан Макрей, он приехал из Австралии, и я хочу поблагодарить отдельно господина Макрея за его э, силу духа, за его искренность и храбрость, э, что он приехал, учитывая то давление, которое Австралия, в общем, относится к одним, э, власти Австралии, руководство Австралии относится к одним из тех э, стран, которые наиболее ожесточенную позицию занимают и политику проводят в отношении Российской Федерации. Спасибо вам большое за ваш подвиг, не побоюсь этого слова. Well, the, the Russian government calls it a feat, a heroic act, Adrian. Uh, how do you respond to what the Russian government uh, calls what you did? Look, I actually had the translation happening in my ear as he was, uh, um, you know, introducing me to the podium. And I, um, I remember thinking, oh, that's a bit harsh. I don't... Uh, I don't think I've done that much. I'm just coming here to observe, you know, an election. That's uh, I've scrutinised the Australian referendum. I've scrutinised federal elections in Australia. I've scrutinised local council elections. Um, just being interested in politics and going to see how the Russian system worked, I, I genuinely didn't expect. You I didn't, did, didn't expect that type of support. I, I didn't expect that uh, I would get the kind of criticism and the kind of backlash that I would get for for merely telling the truth. I didn't go there as a you know as an avid putin supporter or, or a russian supporter i went there with you know just someone who has a passion for you know seeking the truth in all things geopolitical and and certainly um you know to uh i remember when they introduced me i just thought oh you know thank you for the kind introduction but you know i don't think it's uh, quite so crazy but <laughs> i think they were right and i was wrong in this instance coming home to the uh, the uh, shitstorm well, of the, um, the, the, of the russians media. the russians actually predicted the reaction of the australian media because they're used to the Australian media, they're used to the, the mainstream media in the West attacking anything uh, that's remotely the truth or pro-Russian. You don't have to even be pro-Russian, like you said. You just have to be for the truth. And the truth will uh, still, in the end, prevail. And what was your greatest crime? What are they? What are the media actually accusing you of? Well, the the you know the the, the big crime was the fact that I congratulated Putin on. Um, his his amazing win in a very um, transparent it's far more uh, transparent than anything I've ever seen here certainly uh, far more transparent than than uh, you know than the US or, or you know I mean more than 
more than 50%, closer to 60% of Americans now don't trust their own election election process. Um, I can guarantee you in, in Russia that, uh, you know, you, you would be 99% of Russians that believe their election process. Um, but, uh, you know, I congratulated Putin on an election that he won convincingly. I personally, you know, I stayed up, you know, the, the night before the um, that that when I spoke on that podium amongst, you know, maybe 200 other foreign uh, international observers, um, you know, I congratulated the bloke who I saw after staying up until 2 a.m. to watch the, uh, you know, to actually count the ballots myself to see. I wanted to count the paper ballots to see, obviously, the electronic ballots. You don't get to, you don't get a sort of a, a gauge on on what the numbers are, but I counted the ballots. Look, we, was, we, we can the see least that the, we can see the premier of Western Australia, Roger Cook, and his calls against you. We saw the calls from the Ukrainian ambassador in Australia. We want you to be voted out or you to be removed from office. Why are they so threatened by you as just a, a councillor from the town of Port Hedland? The Premier himself feels threatened by you. The Ukrainian ambassador feels threatened. Why? Look, it's, um, it's, it's a great question. I think, um, you know, they've, they've been able to uh, push an agenda for the last two years in particular since the uh, special military operation in, uh, in the Ukraine that... Uh, you know, Australia, we've sent a lot of money, $980 million plus, um, you know, plus, plus to, um, to Ukraine for, a, for a, you know, for obviously what, was, what we were told was an unprovoked. When, when, uh, when the Australian public begins to hear the other side of that, especially from, I guess, an elected official, even though it's only a very small office, you know, it's Port Hedland Council, we're not talking... Uh, you're not talking federal government or even state government here. We're talking a little local government here on the northwest coast of Australia. But when an elected official um, tells the truth about this grand lie that's been pushed on the Australian people, particularly for the last two years, it's uh, you know obviously it's a it's a major threat to to um, you know to the to the narrative, not so much to anyone individually, but to the narrative that they've pushed um, so aggressively on us for two years. Now, Roger Cook, the Premier, he, he's had a go at you. Is there anything you want to say to the, to, in response to the Premier of Western Australia, Roger Cook, Adrian? Look, uh, I'm not going to get in a slinging match with Roger Cook. I, uh, you know, like I said about Penny Wong on the um, uh, on the current affair thing, uh, you know, people at Port Hedland voted me because I stand up to people like Roger Cook and, and his predecessor, Mark McGowan. Those guys, what they did to us, what they did to the people of my town, Port Hedland, and also what they did to the people of, you know, Western Australia. To take these people seriously, they, you know, they, these guys don't couldn't lie straight in bed. They're compulsive liars, the pair of them. And, um, you know, you know, I don't, uh, I'm not really interested in, um, you know, having a, a back and forwards with Roger Cook. It's the, the guy I don't um, you know, like. Penny Wong, I have, I have uh, very little respect for. Well, would you like to challenge Roger Cook to a duel, to a debate? Uh, live on the air, whether it be on Channel 9 or the platform of his choice, as long as it's live. Well, look, Roger Cook did say that my uh, my commentary was was clearly inaccurate. He said it was, uh, you know, it was a bizarre commentary. It was an accurate commentary. Um, you know, I've done nothing here but tell the truth. I would love to debate Roger Cook on any platform, anywhere, any time, on the transparency and the fairness of uh, the Russian election process. But, you know, he, he never would because he, I mean, he hasn't seen it. I've seen it. I've lived it. I'm the only Australian that was there to watch it even though I was there amongst, uh, you know, some very important and, and uh, very influential people from around the world. But, uh, look, the challenge, it's, it's never going to be accepted because the guy has no, uh, you know, his whole narrative has no grounding in truth. Well, Premier Roger Cook, we know you're watching or one of your aides will be watching. Uh, certainly people from the establishment, the political elite, will be monitoring uh, tonight's broadcast on the Aussie Cossack show. Adrian McRae, a councillor. Uh, we think he's done nothing wrong. The people of Australia are certainly here to support him. When is the next federal election? Is the question in the comment section, Adrian? When is the next federal election? Uh, look, you know, there's talk of the federal election being as early as uh, August this year, or it could be as late as um, May May next year. So, you know, it's up to, um, I guess, the Prime Minister and the Governor General to call that election, and um, who knows when it will be. You know, there'll be, uh, you know, of course, all the all the promises and the lies will begin um, when when they start rolling off the tongue you'll know it's probably going to happen soon but at this stage everyone is uh everyone is only guessing well i mean it's great to have you as a council of port headland it's good for the town it's put port headland on the map port headland all of a sudden is trending all around the, the world and in the media in russia and australia 
Uh, but we would uh, love to see you go further in politics. I think personally, and I think people in the comment section watching tonight live would agree that uh, Councillor Adrian McRae uh, needs to be pushed along further up the uh, food chain in the political game to make a difference. We need people like this in the federal parliament or in the state government to challenge these corrupt to challenge these corrupt premiers. We've had nothing but corrupt premiers uh, for years now, uh, starting from the days of lockdowns, and we need people like this in parliament. Uh, what would it take? Uh, what would it take, Adrian? We know you're a humble man. We know you're a person who didn't come to Port Hedland Council to make a name for himself. Um, we know you didn't come there to become a councillor in search of any benefit to yourself personally. In fact, you're uh, personally known, well known as a philanthropist who uh, has supported many causes all around the world, international causes uh, in Africa and uh, events and conferences and so forth. And it's, it's, it's great the work that you do, the philanthropic work that you do, but we'd like to see uh, the road open uh, for the future, for the future uh, in politics, if that's where uh, your path should take you. I don't want to put you on the spot with any questions, but certainly people in Australia need hope. We need hope. We need leadership. We need honest candidates, honest politicians to try to break the duopoly system. Uh, is there any hope uh, to break that system, or do you think the only way to make a difference is to collaborate with one of the two that's major a, parties? That's a that's a that's a million dollar question, Cossack. And I um, look, I, I I ran in the federal election for my region of Durack, the biggest um, the biggest electorate in Australia geographically, um, in 2022. Now I did that because you know I was I was pretty disappointed and pretty angry about uh, the way we'd all been treated through the um, through the uh, shenanigans of of the COVID, um, the COVID, the mandates, the lockdowns, and the um, the border closures, and the travel, and all the restrictions that were put us put on us at that time, which people are now, you know, starting to wake up to, and I guess uh, critical of. But um, look, I never say never with with politics. I, I it's not something I ever really considered or, or wanted to to delve into. I've always been extremely interested in it. I've researched, um, you know, geopolitics and stuff for you know best part of the last uh, twenty five years. So look, I have a good it's not something that I ever really um, thought I would I would step into, but look, it's um, you know the way that the way that uh, I've learned in the last um, two weeks in particular since arriving back in Australia to see the lengths that um, the mainstream media in particular, and I guess I guess that's uh, you know it's coming from a, a government backing uh, what what people will do to smear and shut down uh, dissenting opinions. I think that's frightening in what we consider a free and democratic um, country when when uh, opposing voices are so aggressively um, so aggressively stifled and and uh, and suppressed and and smeared so look it's um well agent Australia... one of the people one of these opposing voices who are opposing your voice uh, who smeared you who attacked you publicly was actually uh, Mick Ryan who's an Australian uh, army major general uh, on ABC I mean this was a, a absolute disgrace and we'll remind our audience of what this Australian retired should I say major general uh, has said uh, in regards to you. Now, Russian propaganda, uh, There's some of that strikes home here in Australia, Mick. How are we to interpret an obscure local councillor, uh, as far as we can tell, from Port Hedland, congratulating Vladimir Putin on his election victory? This is Adrian McCrae, who stood for election in Australia with the Great Australia Party, and he went as a so-called independent monitor. Uh, is he a prime example of a propaganda tool at this stage? Unfortunately, it appears so. The Russians are very effective at getting misinformation out in a range of different countries around the world. And Australia is, no, is in no way immune to this. We've seen it from other countries. We're seeing it from Russia. They will seek to influence populations where they're susceptible to Russian messages. Unfortunately, it appears this person may have been very susceptible to it, but we should be very clear, as the foreign ministers uh, made clear and many other democracies have made clear, this was not a transparent and fair election in Russia that's just been connect, uh, conducted. Yeah, and I would have thought that for propaganda to be effective, the source needs to be credible. I'm not sure that uh, is fully established in this example that we were just alluding to. Well, I think that's an absolute disgrace that this Major General Mick Ryan, uh, who formerly served in the uh, Australian military, is having a crack at someone for having an opinion. 
But again, guys, it wasn't even an opinion that Adrian was bringing forward. This councillor from Western Australia was simply sharing his first-hand observations of how the Russian election went. And according to Adrian, uh, Putin really did win. Is it true? Did Putin win the election? Look, I, I as I sort of started saying earlier, I counted the phys I physically counted the ballots in Putin's least most least popular region on the whole Russian landmass, in the right in the heart of Moscow, where he's known to be unpopular, and he got eight out of ten votes in that in that uh, electoral electoral commission. So he he got on the Russian landmass then. Uh, Absolutely, the, the the count at eighty seven percent. I thought it might even be a little bit higher than that, but he absolutely got those votes. But look, we we can't um, the, the the narrative that these guys push. This military guy, it's disgraceful. You know, we've got we've got our premier and our previous premier um, Mark McGowan calling for a national cabinet meeting, meeting of the prime minister and the and the premiers, calling for a national cabinet meeting in China, in communist China. But me going. To Through their entire electoral process is somehow a crime, and I, I, you know, I get bastardized and smeared and uh, crucified for for bringing that information back. While uh, while premiers and uh, you know, never even mind what Dan Andrews and these guys were doing with China, they were having more meetings in China than having in their own office. And yet, yet, uh, you know, they, the the most common smear I've seen on my own social media and and in and around is oh, I'm clearly a communist. <laughs> it's like people even. Are people even uh, watching what their uh, what their premiers and prime minister are doing? It's this is in a real shambles. It's it's uh, it's really embarrassing, actually. You know, the, I'm getting so many um, calls and messages from friends in Russia, in particular, and they and they they're all genuinely in shock. And I, I, to be honest, I'm um, I'm actually embarrassed in my country that uh, they would go to such lengths to embarrass themselves with such blatant, clear, and obvious lies and bullshit. Look, it's it's a it's a you know. I'm, 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 I've never been so embarrassed by my country as I have in the last two weeks. Well, what's where to now? Where to now? What's the plan? Uh, this 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 huge energy around your persona, around your character now, and the, uh, the mass support that you're receiving internationally, including mostly, of course, in Australia locally, uh, it's, it's certainly a resource to be reckoned with. I don't think uh, Premier Cook has such support. I don't think Albanese or Penny Wong would have even have such support. And, uh, of course, you're a councillor at the moment, uh, but what are your plans? And how have your fellow councillors and the mayor in Port Hedland, how have they reacted uh, to this uh, fiasco? Look, fellow councillors have been great. They've, um, you know, they ring me with, uh, you know, messages of support all the time. They're sort of watching. Yeah, I think more people seem to, more haters seem to come out of the woodwork than um, than supporters, but um Certainly here locally, we're, we're, we're um, you know sort of probably 50-50 and watching the watching some of the feeds. But look, I I haven't um, to be honest, it's all happened so quickly, and and I've just come back into the country from a bit of time away. So um, you know the business, my businesses are you know the sort of my first my first priority, and then uh, of course the council, the stuff that the stuff I need to do for um, in my new elected role that I've got to get my um, hands over. So look, it's um, as far as as far as future stuff, I haven't. Honestly, I haven't even really uh, thought about where, what, what the possibilities and, and uh, you know, where I take that. Well, one of those uh, voices which was uh, having a crack at you, uh, a public uh, attack, was actually, surprisingly enough, was actually the ambassador uh, in Canberra for Ukraine. So you've got the Ukrainian ambassador, and I think, I think personally he's way out of line, but the Ukrainian ambassador actually called upon your resignation uh, we uh, brought this story f uh, first uh, to the air uh, on Sputnik. Uh, that the behaviour of the Ukrainian ambassador has caught the attention. It, it looks like he himself is actually interfering in Australia's internal affairs. The Ukrainian ambassador in Australia, Vasil Mirosnichenko, uh, has had a track record of interfering in the uh, internal affairs of Australia. And he does so uh, unashamedly, uh, without any reservations. It's, it's so clear and obvious what he's doing. Uh, Australians are sick of it. Uh, people are sick of it. He he tries to get interviews wherever he can. He tries to appear in the mainstream media, and it's always the same line. Give us money, give us weapons. In fact, he's been accused of window shopping when it comes to Australia's uh, military arsenal or whatever's left of it. The Ukrainians have already cleaned out uh, the large part or more than half of uh, Australia's available 
military equipment, their M777 artillery systems, 120 Bushmaster vehicles. In fact, there were so many Bushmaster vehicles pledged to Ukraine that they had to uh, get the factories in Bendigo working around the clock with extra shifts just to keep up with demand. Uh, the Ukrainian uh, ambassador, Vasil Mishnachenko, has publicly attacked the Australian government when they refused to hand over uh, the Taipan uh, uh, helicopters, which were forcibly retired uh, due to uh, having serious uh, defects. And rather than hand them over to Ukraine, uh, despite uh, strong requests and demands, you could even say demands from the Ukrainian ambassador, Australia util utilized them and destroyed them and buried them. Uh, the same goes for the uh, uh, 50 or so uh, Abrams tanks, which are in storage in Australia. Uh, they're due to be retired and be replaced. The Ukrainians desperately want them. The Australians are saying no. Now, when the Australian government says no, then you see the real inner character of the Ukrainian ambassador, the Zelensky regime. Uh, this insolence, this uh, uh, ungratefulness, well, we saw the Ukrainian ambassador there, and we've heard his comments. We've seen the Ukrainian community, uh, led by uh, a open Nazi collaborator who supports the Ukrainian Nazis who collaborated with the Germans, uh, Stefan Romanov, should be spelled Romanov, but anyway, that's another story. He's, he's, he's also called upon your resignation. They've started a petition to try and remove you, these Ukrainians, together with their ambassador. How is that not interference into the internal affairs of Australia, Adrian? When you're a councillor, uh, democratically elected in Port Hedland in Western Australia, you've got the Ukrainian ambassador from Canberra zeroing in on you and attacking you, calling for your resignation. Tell me how that is not interference of Ukraine into Australia's internal affairs. Look, I um, again, I, I take it with a grain of salt, but but. Look, of course, of course, it is. Um, you know, it should be considered foreign interference, really. But you know, can you just imagine the situation? What would happen if if the Russian ambassador did something similar and suggested made a suggestion that an Australian elected official needed to be voted out of local, state, or federal government? It would be an uproar. I imagine the Russian ambassador would be moved from the country. Absolutely, if the shoe was on the other foot. If it's the Israelis, if, if it's the Israeli lobby groups in Canberra, or if it's the Ukrainians who are trying to take away Australia's weapons and take Australian taxpayers' money, it's like there's a there's a whole set of different rules for them. So if it was the Russian ambassador or the Chinese ambassador calling upon an elected official to be removed from office, that would be foreign interference. You're right. But if it's the Israelis or the Ukrainians, there's no problems. It's allowed. How, how does that work? Look, it's it's a, look again. It's it's just one of those um, uh, oxymorons of the Australian government right now. And uh, look, if the Australian people even understood the system now that's going on, and uh, the latest the latest news out of Ukraine is that you know, of course, everyone that follows what's going on there, they're pulling young men out of their homes that uh, have no interest in in this fight against Russia, and they're being dragged out of their homes and arrested if they don't uh, sign up to go and. Um, you know, become, you know, join the meat grinder on the front lines. All the while, Zelensky himself has cancelled elections. He's outlived his mandate. His, uh, his election term has finished and he's cancelled elections. So Australia has literally sent $980 million to an actual dictator that won't allow elections. Um, even Churchill during World War II never stopped, never stopped the British from going to the polls to see if they wanted to put Churchill back into office. We know now that if Zelensky was to run again, he would be voted. Sick of the the lies and being being used as this uh, used as a, a sort of a a tool to um, you know to to attack kill Russians and destabilize Russia. It's you know they're using NATO weapons, NATO NATO intelligence, NATO uh, uh, information war, and and uh, they're they're paying the price in Ukrainian blood. And it's just it's it breaks my heart. I you know like I have friends in both Ukraine and in Russia, and uh, the, both sides see the ridiculousness of the fight. But um, Zelensky is obviously doing as he's told by, you know, these these absolute scumbags like Boris Johnson that come down every time Zelensky wants to sign a peace deal, he gets told, no, no, you've got to, you know, throw a few of your, few more of your young Ukrainian men into the into the fray, and um, it's you know they lose more territory and and who um, uh, um, Lindsey Graham and and. Uh, 
and the like in, in US Congress uh, are saying, we're happy to fight this war down to the last Ukrainian man. It, it, it's just absurd. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's insulting. And it's, you know, it's, I hope these people rot in hell for what they've done to the people of Ukraine. I really do. These, these uh, Western globalists that are, you know, hell bent on encircling, encircling uh, Russia with, um, you know, nuclear weapons and, and uh, this militarization of NATO on, right on Russia's borders. These people uh, are, are just evil and they need to be, um, I hope they're, uh, I hope they get their, um, their, their, their comeuppance in this life or the next. It's very sad that the uh, NATO powers, the American regime, has no concern for the population of Ukraine. They, re they really do not care how many Ukrainians die, which is why they want this conflict to keep going and going. And I agree with what you're saying, uh, that they don't care. They just want uh, this war to keep going so they can keep supplying weapons. They can keep making their billions of dollars. And most of that money, 80% of that money, which is earmarked for Ukraine, doesn't actually leave the US. It goes into the defense companies, the United States military industrial complex. And that's how they make money. That's how they make the economy survive on the blood of these poor Ukrainians. It's not Russia that's killing Ukrainians. In fact, the Russian military is doing everything possible to preserve Ukrainian life. Uh, in fact, the Russians are fighting this special operation, not as a war, but in a limited capacity to try to preserve Ukrainian civilian life, but also Ukrainian military life. And that means, of course, that Russia takes casualties. Russian troops do die. Uh, they're wounded. They're killed in battle. But they're wounded and killed. Uh, it's almost as though they're sacrificing themselves to allow Ukrainians to live. If Russia wanted to do a Gaza-style attack like the Israelis did to Gaza and just bomb everything, bomb civilians, it would, of course, it would be a much easier conflict, wouldn't it? But the Russians have chosen a, a honorable uh, way, a dignified way of conducting uh, this conflict, this uh, special military operation. So the Russians really do need to be yeah, congratulated on that. And these Russian heroes who are dying and fighting, they're fighting against the military industrial complexes of 50 plus countries, sadly, including Albanese, including the $980 million which Australians have sent. But of course, in saying that, there's nothing Australia has sent that can actually change the war. Our Defence Minister, Richard Miles, who was born in Geelong, foolishly announced that he thinks that Bushmasters are actually changing the course of the conflict. Do you really think, Adrian, a Bushmasters from Australia can change the course of this conflict and can make any difference to the to the war? Uh, look, it's, look, it's you know that's <clears throat> it's feel good um, it's feel good fodder for the um, you know the Australian masses to you know, hopefully make you know continue the you know the uh, general population support of of this you know these lies that we've been told about um, the war. You you kind of said it before. Um, quite clearly, most of the money when we hear $100 billion from the US is going to uh, aid Ukraine, it's not, as you said, it's not going to US, it's going to Raytheon and Grumman and Boeing and, and uh, Northrop, which are all predominantly BlackRock owned companies. The money goes to these, stay, the money stays within the US, it goes to these, uh, you know, these big, big um, military industrial giants owned by BlackRock. So the, the, and of course, they don't come, they don't come debt free. So all these weapons of you know making making BlackRock richer, um, they go to Ukraine, kill a bunch of Ukrainians, kill a bunch of Russians, and of course Ukraine can never afford to pay it back. So so the repayment is is land and is snapped up at pennies on the dollar by BlackRock, which is owed all these huge amounts of debt that is um, you know issued by the U.S. government on behalf of the US American people now. With with the obviously the Trump situation now with Trump coming into office, or if he if if the elections are going to be allowed to be run and fair, and and of course that's very questionable in the U.S. It's certainly far more questionable in the U.S. than in Russia. Um, does all this, you know, it's obviously we've seen now the Republicans take over take over the uh, midterms, and um, most of the funding from the U.S. is now stopped. Now, look, it's it's a uh, where where this all finishes. Hopefully, um, hopefully we do see some common sense, and um, you know. Uh, uh, a Trump or a you know someone with a bit of common sense is able to um, you know to end this end this ridiculous conflict and um, you know bring American troops and and uh, you know American militarization and, and all this stop this. You know, as people know, and I think I saw in your video before before um, before it came on, Zirinovsky has been talking about this uh, idea to win over Russia for three hundred years, and um, it's it's a it's a it's an age old. Um, 
it's an age-old idea that uh, you know should be um, you know should be thrown to the, the the trash cans of history. But it's um, for some reason these uh, these globalists still have this uh, aggressive um, you know the, these neocon ideas to to um, you know to capture Russia and obviously to balkanize Russia and, and to um, get their hands on the resources that Russia is so rich in. That's a good uh, position, a good summary. I have to say, I agree with every uh, word and uh, every thesis that you've uh, manifested tonight on the Aussie Cossack Show. I do have to say thank you on behalf of uh, thousands of our viewers and I would say millions of people around the world who appreciate your position that you haven't given in. And I look, I think the reason is is that you are a businessman, you are in the mining and construction industry, you came to politics as a counsellor, not because you needed something, you actually were willing to give something. You wanted to support your community and serve your people, which makes you some, uh, you make, which makes you someone who's not susceptible to pressure from the media, from the political establishment. There's nothing they have on you, and there's nothing that you need from them, uh, which is why you're the perfect, in my opinion, candidate to keep going in politics. Uh, a councillor for Port Hedland is a great start, and of course, Port Hedland is a strategic port. Eighty percent of Australia's uh, wealth goes through that port, the iron ore, hundreds of millions of dollars a day, in fact, uh, of revenue uh, to Australia passes through the port where you are now uh, a councillor of. But we would love to uh, see uh, you, Adrian, uh, go further in politics. And uh, a shout out to all of our viewers in Western Australia who are watching. Uh, let's hope there's an election called soon, a federal election. We'll see how things pan out. What uh, chances do we have in taking back this country? Adrian, what chances do we have to the people out there who are sitting at home watching, who are sick of this, who are sick of the same lame mainstream media narrative which they see every day, the same sellout politicians who they've seen on TV every day from the major parties? Uh, is there hope? Can we turn it around? Can we save Australia is the question. Look, I really believe that we can, yeah, but it's um, it's going to take a lot more people to get interest in politics. And sadly, um, <clears throat> you know, we've got a... We've got a, a to the political sphere in this country, which is, um, you know, if if we continue along that path in this country, I don't think we're going to uh, we're going to know we're going to know the the country that we all sort of you know that I certainly love and I grew up in. Um, it, it won't be recognisable by 2030, 2035. I really am nervous about where we're heading. And uh, again, that's why I stood up. But uh, you know, I thought we can we can you know try and do it, make some changes locally. And um, you know, I think uh, looking at the state of affairs. Looking at the state of affairs and the people we've got in in both um, certainly in, in Perth in my state and and uh, in a greater greater sense in in Canberra, I don't have much faith in the um, those the political class here to uh, to do what needs to be done to um, resurrect this country to to where it once was, especially especially like in the subject we're talking on, um, you know the, this whole uh, militarization and, and prodding the bear of Russia while um, you know the Middle East is lighting up and and uh, you know we I don't think. There are no winners in a war like that. It's it's you know we're we're um we're really uh we're really in uncharted waters right now, and and I think um certainly we need cool heads in in all levels of parliament. And uh, yeah, look, I just I hope I hope we can um, I hope Australians can really step up in the next election and and uh, put some put some decent people in there because certainly um, I have zero faith in the ones the ones that I'm seeing certainly at the state level in across Australia right now. Well, we can only hope that the uh, there is a bright future, that Australia can be saved, and we need more honest, fair-income politicians uh, in uh, our parliaments, in our local governments, in our state parliaments, federal parliaments. Uh, we need to drain the swamp and to get rid of them. And uh, Adrian McRae, I wish you all the best and all of our followers, supporters. Where can people follow your work? I'm not... Uh... I like to I like to lurk in the shadows, mate. I'm not sort of one big in the social media. So, um, judging by your uh, social media page, I think they can follow my work on your social media at the moment. But look, I'm not a. I have a small, um, you know, Facebook following out here in the um, out here in the west. But uh, again, I'm not. Well, one let me real... say, look, let me say, we will. You're you're right. We will on Aussie Kozak Telegram or Aussie Kozak on Twitter on X. Make sure you uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed because we'll bring you updates and we'll keep a close eye on uh, the you know, political career path or the, the rise of Adrian McRae, we can put it. Uh, I'm very, very pleased and happy and I know many others around the country are that someone is taking on the system. And in fact, 
you haven't even done anything too radical. It's the system's reaction to you, which has made you a hero. When the system goes against you, when you got the likes of Penny Wong and uh, that Premier Roger Cook, who are publicly blasting you and denouncing you, the in immediate reaction of normal, awake, free-thinking, uh, uh, truth-loving uh, uh, constituents in Australia is to say, well, that's the kind of guy I would vote for. That's the kind of guy I would support. And the fact that you're not a career politician, the fact that you're someone who comes from land, uh, I've been told you were uh, born in Dubbo, you grew up on a on a farm. Now, tell us about your childhood. We've got a few minutes to go, but tell us where you're from and how you uh, how, how you rose to this position where you are today. <laughs> I'm not sure I rose to any uh, any positions of such, but uh, you know, I grew up on the farm. I'm um, you know, I went to uh, yeah, my family is still on the farm in central New South Wales, in west of Dubbo, and hard and and uh, you know, you know, we were taught we were taught sort of very you know very strong Christian upbringing, and and certainly um, you know, we were told uh, you know decency and honesty and integrity and and uh, probably above all else, telling the truth is. Uh, is you know it was just drilled into us and certainly um you know s you know standing up for what you believe in and and uh you know all my um all my siblings have gone into their own businesses and have all been you know very successful and and uh yeah look i ended up out here in the west um sort of 16 17 years ago just uh after after years of traveling the world and um and sort of backpacking and doing you know played, played professional sport overseas and and uh came over here to save a few dollars and and i'm still here but uh look it's um you know i i uh Always, as I said, political and geopolitical and and uh, and health stuff. I've I've studied a lot of this stuff for a lot of years now. And certainly, when um, COVID came along, it was sort of I guess you know I was I was sort of pushed into the limelight a little bit in in Western Australia. And, and uh, you know, my companies out here were, were successful enough to be able to support a lot of good causes in the space. And um, you know, I I, uh, I I put on some you know some big events all around the world, both both here in um, Western Australia and also internationally around, um, you know, just just things that I, you know, um, activist and political things that I, um, you know, believe in, and I guess that's, um, yeah, I guess you know, I sort of got my name on the map through through supporting in the background big events, and you know, I've I think you, know, you mentioned earlier I've, I've been, uh, you know, sixty minutes to destroy me years ago for charity stuff that I do over there. We've got, um, I'm fortunate now to have. Uh, you know, one of the biggest primary schools in um, in Tanzania, and and uh, lots of water wells, and you know, bought water, and you know, bought some pretty cool things to people all around um, East Africa, and that's just you know, I, again, I don't sort of do it to put my name in the. Um, well, the so what? What? The, 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 how possibly can the Australian government call you a a Russian pro-Russian person or an agent or something? You've been um, an active philanthropist supporting. African homeless children in orphanages and digging wells in the middle of Africa in the desert for people to have running water. I mean, you've been doing this for years. You've been in this game. You've just come to their attention now just because you went to Moscow. And I think it's a bloody disgrace that the Australian government's had this reaction. But what can I say? It means you're on the right side of history. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, Adrian. Look, we're uh, closing off the show tonight. I just want to say to everyone watching, these are the type of people in Australia if we have in politics, it means all is not lost. I mean, I'm sure the people watching tonight and there's thousands of you watching uh, can see that Adrian McRae is the future for Australia. We need people like this in government to drain the swamp, to get rid of all the corrupt politicians and bureaucrats. Uh, there is hope. There is hope. And that's why they've attacked him. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. We had a massive audience. We're coming up to 1.5 hours. Hit the share button. Hit the like button. Uh, share this video, especially if in Western Australia amongst uh, the uh, Perth, Port Hedland communities. That's the real story. That's the true story. Uncensored and true on the Aussie Cossack show. Councillor Adrian McRae. Well, we've heard the revelations as well about uh, what's happening here at the Russian consulate in Sydney and the pressure, which supposedly is being applied from the Australian government. We'll bring an update on that. Tune in every Sunday, the new time, Sunday, 5 p.m. Sydney time. Uh, 10 a.m. Moscow time and midnight Los Angeles time. Look forward next week to uh, joining with our regular co-hosts with Sarah from Digital Politics and uh, everybody else. Great to see all your comments in the comment section. And that's right, like and share the stream. As Joey Shantz has said, thank you. Having a 
a great show. It was a pleasure to share Sunday night with you. And I think it'll be a good tradition moving forward. Sunday nights with the Aussie Cossack, 5 p.m. Uh, have a great evening. And until next week, uh, we will see you then.